back again in another uh, short video designed to uh, accompany the latest article in the, this month's newsletter. Uh, this month I'll be uh, giving a brief uh, talk on my understanding of uh, believe it or not. Um, we all have certain beliefs, we all have certain values and we all have certain judgments. These um, are conditioned into us from birth depending on where we were born, the society we are born into, the uh, social environment we are born into, any religious environment. And we tend to identify strongly with the patterns of the society with, with, within which we grow up. Certainly in our formative years when we are still very, very young we tend to absorb information without analysing or without judging it. So we take on all of this information, we certainly believe a lot of what our parents and our neighbours and the school teachers and uh, siblings etc. say to us, we, we may even believe what we read in the newspapers or what we see on the television, but depending upon the conditions or the <coughs> focus uh, that was our growing up. Um, we have unique ways of dealing with the world. Sometimes we reject information, but we still exist within a certain structure that's created by the information that we're given when we're very, very young. That information becomes a framework or the structure through which we go through life, taking whatever shows up, dealing with it, processing it, but essentially believing that that is the world, that is the reality that we live within. This tends to create, in, in my understanding, a sort of a tunnel vision that we exist within. We, we live within this tunnel. This tunnel is created by the beliefs, the points of view that we acquire when we're very young, the social conditioning, the social pressures, the life that we live, what we believe is true, what we believe is right, what we believe is wrong. These all create this tunnel. We exist within this tunnel because that's what we believe. It's very difficult to realise that we exist within the tunnel because we're totally immersed in that tunnel. We know nothing else. So it becomes very difficult to be objective about what's going on in a broader picture if it doesn't exist within the tunnel of our own frame of reference. So having created this tunnel or having had this tunnel created for us by our uh, predecessors, by our parents, siblings, society, we, we come to accept this tunnel as the reality. So then every decision we make arises as a result of our accepting this tunnel as reality, as our believing in it, as our giving energy to it. So we believe this is who we are, this is how things are within this framework, this tunnel. And of course there are a lot of different people growing up in different parts of the world with different backgrounds, different conditioning, that have different tunnels, that have a different idea about how things are. And it's of course when these two uh, or many, of course, come into conflict with each other, each trying to impose their values upon another, that we experience conflict in the world. We believe that this is who we are, I am such and such, and we identify ourselves strongly through our belief systems and through our emotional responses and reactions. We take these very personally and they create the world. But they also maintain the tunnel that we exist within. So all our, of our questioning can only arise from within the structure of the tunnel. All of the answers that we seek can only exist within the tunnel. And so any sense of who we are arises out of the conditioning and then our subsequent identification with that tunnel. So we tend to believe a lot of information, even though that information is not based upon anything approaching fact. 
We believe information that's passed down from our parents. We believe information, perhaps, that we learn in school. But who taught the school teachers? Who taught our parents? Where did they learn their information from? Who gave them the story if it weren't for their parents and their society? And then we get handed that down as though it were fact. This is the world you live in. Deal with it. And so, of course, trying to deal with a world that exists within this narrow uh, tunnel framework becomes really impossible because we spend all of our time trying to navigate, negotiate, manipulate the feelings that we experience, the quality of the experience that we have within this tunnel, all because we simply believe that this is who we are. What I'm trying to explain in the, um, in the article, and again shortly, briefly in this video, is that this isn't who we are. This is who we have come to believe ourselves to be because of the conditioning that we've experienced in the past. It doesn't necessarily have to be projected into the future. But it's very difficult to stop and be objective about the information contained in this tunnel, as I said earlier, because we are so totally immersed within it. So we cannot step outside of that and look at it objectively and say, oh, that's a tunnel, that's where you're going, this is what's happening. We are the tunnel, we are the experience, we are the thoughts, we are the emotions. All of the time that we continue to identify with and personalise those thoughts, feelings and emotions. All of the time we think this is who I am, we remain within the tunnel, we remain within the confines of that uh, tunnel, the limitations, and so there is very little opportunity for growth and change because we have already limited ourselves by hanging on to this belief that this is who we are. When we practice the clearing, what we're really doing is noticing phenomena such as thoughts, feelings, even physical sensations that the body experiences. And then we, through understanding what's going on, through recognising that the body is simply responding according to its conditioned way of being, we can say, well, this is just a feeling of. This isn't who I am. This may be who I believe myself to be. This may be who I believed myself to be in the past and thus, having believed that, created the present. And if I don't change that fundamental belief pattern, then I've created tomorrow. Tomorrow's already written in stone from that point of view. There is no option, there is no choice available to us outside of this tunnel. When we start to acknowledge what's going on, but without judging it, and the, the, the basic fundamentals are clearing, we stop judging what's happening to us. There is no good or bad, there is just an experience. Of course, this belief pattern, if you start to believe this, the first thing you think of is that you know, you're going to get overloaded with negative thoughts or you're going to permit negative acts, antisocial acts in your environment. But this isn't the case. In fact, the opposite is true. What we do with the clearing is pick up information, which we're picking up all of the time, whether we're conscious of it or not. We're trying to bring that uh, information more into our consciousness so we understand what's happening, so that we then begin to have a choice, even within the confines of this tunnel, about what we do with that information. Are we going to continue to believe it? Because if we do, then our reality is pretty well set out already. The path ahead of us has already been laid out. But what happens if we stop taking that personally? If we simply notice it and let it go? It takes practice at first because the conditioning, the, the addiction to certain ways of being on a cellular level will kind of try and pull us back into that way of being and maintain that old status quo, that old tunnel vision. But as we can move beyond that by not judging, by not blaming, by not identifying with the phenomena, by not taking it personally, we simply notice it, this is this, this is okay, it's just stuff passing. But in order to do that, of course, we need to feel safe.
And for many of us, safety wasn't one of those things that we learned as a child. We didn't learn how to deal with situations from a very safe place, and so we tended to remain closed. So first of all, we need to feel safe. How do we feel safe? We feel safe by beginning in a safe environment, where preferably where you're on your own and you know you can't be sort of having to explain yourself to anybody else. We feel safe in a certain environment. We start to notice thoughts and phenomena, which are all a product of what we have believed in the past to be true. And we notice this and we notice how it affects the body. And then we stop giving that energy by putting our attention elsewhere. We focus on something else outside of the self so that we stop feeding that old addiction. And if we practice this long enough, of course, then that old addiction will lose all charge. It will no longer keep driving us down that tunnel of limitations. And of course, when that happens, the, start, the heart starts to relax, it starts to feel safe, it starts to open. When the heart opens, the tunnel walls start to expand. And when the tunnel walls expand, you start to see the world very, very differently. And that encourages you, one would hope, to continue to open the heart to see world, the world differently. To stop creating your world based on the fear, the anxiety, the grief, the shame from your past. Good luck with that. So there's plenty of information in the newsletter to help you, but also on the website, of course. Take a look and practice. Notice for yourself the difference. Don't believe the word I've just told you. Otherwise, you're just taking somebody else's belief in exchange for one that you, know, you don't need anymore. But practice it for yourself. Can you make this a reality? Can you experience the changes that happen in your world when you stop taking yourself quite so seriously? Enjoy the journey and uh, all being well.